Hello and welcome back to TW 2016 and the Branding Solution. And we are here on the Go Home Show for Smackdown Before Unstoppable. And I've decided on this show to have a lot more pretty much on the ad lib promos rather than attacks because I want to make everyone look reasonably good before. I don't want to have anyone any more than we do beat down on the go-home show for this pay-per-view. So we start with our pre-show, as always, just trying to bump the main lot up a little bit. And we have Team SAS defeat Andrea and Angel Rose. It's all, they're all going to say abysmal or terrible. That's what they do. But we're here to slowly improve, and this does what it needed to do. Another pre-match, we have Natalia defeat Katrina Lee. This one's a bit better because I expect Katrina Lee to be better from what I remember when she was in the WWE, but still, not good enough yet. Now we have the Forgotten Generation. Our women's tag team champions defeat Heidi Lovelace and Nicola Glencross. I did this one. Just trying to find a couple more tag teams out there, you know. We've got a few, but we need uh, maybe one more big one to be proper challenges for the Forgotten Generation. Continuing our move forward, we have Eva Marie defeat Kelly Skater. And again, another one from my NXT lot to see what we have. I went for the ones that have best popularity that I could hire that aren't already in the company in NXT and she has in the 20s for popularity so let's see where we can go we continue on with Fox's clients Alicia Fox, Amber Moon and Naomi defeating Mary Dobson, Tapa and Kristen Van Iri um, yeah this those three are all from NXT they've all been reliable Dobson is actually the current NXT Women's Champion. As you can see, Fox's clients are all rated the same for performance. And we have a couple of improvements there. We have Samurai defeat Ludark Shayatan. Uh, they didn't click. Fair enough. This, she has nothing for popularity anywhere. This was literally just to see what we could pull out of, see if there's anything about this one. She's young. There could be a chance something happens with her. We'll go and have a look at her popularity after the match, after the show, if I remember. Cheryl Evans and Ashley Lane defeat Evie and Tessa Blanchett. Um, this one worked a lot better than I thought it would. Um, everything we needed, we just have to change her gimmick. She's not really a hill, so I've gone with cocky. And above average, yeah. Fair enough, that would work for the style that the dangerously beautiful have. And my main event was, I did this to see if Charlotte could get more out of other people, and Charlotte beat Gabby Gilbert of a 68, which I think is a great rating, considering Gilbert's performance is 22. I didn't have Charlotte pegged in for a proper match on the show, so... I want to try and not have Charlotte in the absolute main event at the moment. Because I can't keep having Charlotte, Sasha. So I have to see what we can do on a show without the second biggest woman, popularity-wise, in the show. And so we start our main show with Sasha. And Sasha Banks comes out, tells Emma that you've attacked me twice, but the third time. You couldn't get the job done. And this is just like Unstoppable, where I will once again walk out women's champion. Emma comes out and warns Sasha, you need to face the truth. Your time is up. I pinned you last week. I will do it once again. So this is my main event for Unstoppable, which is big, big risk, because Emma's not quite main event potential. But she's getting some great ratings in the matches she's doing now. So I think I may have been able to push her towards the main event level. 
for a one-off match to see what happens. So, we'll start the show. Where we have Emma going straight into a match where she beat Sinatra Garrett. Um, it's never going to be a great match. 58. She's up to 74 in performance. And I think when we started this, she was in and around the 60s. So, we have gone the right direction with her. Next up, as I say, we're just going to do a little promos on this show. Alexa Bliss cuts a promo on page. It's going to be the same sort of thing we've been hearing, because once again, Alexa Bliss beat Paige at the last pay-per-view. She will do it again, she reckons, and they're going to have a last woman standing match, which I think is a big, big match for the two of them. And this leads to Paige having a match against Aaliyah, it's a 72, it's another really good match. Again, just want them all to have tidy matches before going into the pay-per-view. We now have Dangerously Beautiful accepting Fox's, Fox's Clyde's Extinction Agenda Challenge where Angel Williams and Cheryl Evans will be facing Ember Moon and Naomi. Uh, last week they challenged them to two singles matches at the pay-per-view and now we've got the two matches made they've already been booked in and we have Angel Williams defeat Levy Bates a, a Botox injection that's a nice finisher for her not the best in ring performance and Levy Bates generally gives me good matches so maybe the Angel's more of a mic leader rather than a wrestler we next have an interview segment where Becky explains more about why she's been attacking Charlotte and why she wants to beat Charlotte once and for all. Kathy Kelly nearly killed this one for me. Not happy with her. And then Becky Lynch defeats Dana Brooke with a disarmor on a 72. Another good match. Yeah, I didn't want it to be Charlotte. Let's face it, I can't keep having Charlotte. Now we have another promo where GNX cut a promo on the Forgotten Generation before their tag team title match at Unstoppable. Not the best, but they're not quite as over as I'd hoped. But I think they're a great tag team, so I'm happy to keep them together. In our match, we get a, six, a 55. They've re- I've officially made them a tag team now. I have the Heartbreak Express, which is Brooke Adams and Candice LaRue. They got great chemistry. Why not make them a tag team, right? So I'm happy with where that match went. Um, Taryn Terrell says she will somehow find a way to beat Nia Jax at the pay-per-view. Yeah, it's not the best storyline, really. And we have Taryn Terrell defeat Jessica Havoc. Yeah, I wanted her to face someone who could be classed as weird and the picture does enough to make me think she could be someone outside the norm. And then I have one attack. I have Nia Jax attacking Terrell. I had to do this one because Nia Jax has been dominating Terrell, who got lost by a count out when she faced her in the debut match. Now we have Mickey James and Gail Kim facing Taylor Maid and Shirley de Melissa because threw her in there, let's be honest. Um, it's actually a good, a poor match. Um, the idea in this match is Taylor made actually walked out on the match, leaving Shirley and Melissa to face both Mickey and Gal, the two experienced big names from the early 2000s. Mickey James and Taylor made have a cage match set up. Gal Kim not quite got a match for the pay-per-view yet. Continuing the Intercontinental storyline, we have Carmella kind of promo on Oscar saying how she will finally get this when she needs. We'll get that title. And then we have Bailey losing to Alexa Bliss. Now, I, and there was a distraction by Nikki, which is why she won, which is Alexa's partner and Bailey's opponent at the pay per view. Now, I want to try and make Alexa Bliss on the same level as Sasha Banks. 
And my re reasoning for that is the age thing. She is the same age in the early to mid 20s rather than later 20s. So Alexa Bliss and Sasha could literally be the carrying couple for SmackDown for years to come. And a 75 is a good rating. Afterwards, Bailey grabs the mic after being beaten and she cuts a promo on Nikki Bella saying that she's going to take her out to stop her interfering anymore in these matches. She's tired of having to face both of them. She will get the job done and put Nikki back down the pack in order. And 82 is actually a really good rating for this. And my main event, which I think was a bit riskier than it should have been, but I had Sasha and Oscar face Nikki Bella and Carmella. Sasha defeated Nikki Bella with a bank statement. Yes, I didn't want Carmella to get pinned. The idea is Carmella and Oscar just brawled off into the crowd somewhere, leaving both on their own. Sasha Banks gets the nice victory going into the pay-per-view, which is what you would imagine seeing in this sort of tag team match. And then we have a mass. This is basically drawn out like when you see the end of a show when they all come out and hit their finishers. Where Emma comes out, hits um, Sasha with a finisher, which brings Natalia out. Then Summer Rae attacks Natalia. Paige comes out to hit Summer Rae with a finisher. And then Bliss and Bella both attack Paige before Bailey hits a twin Bailey to Bailey. Um, Bailey to Bailey suplexes. And she's looking to celebrate and she turns around and she has a stare down with Sasha Banks, teasing at the idea of having Bailey versus Sasha. And an 80 to finish this is brilliant because on paper, Summer Rae and Natalia are not quite as over as the rest. So this has helped their match look good. I'm really happy of how this one's come out. And we'll see how the show went. I am thinking... Mid-70s to lower 70s. We've got a 76. I am happy with that. The, the last three, the matches, Alexa Bliss versus Bailey was actually the match of the night. That's a big thing to note. But otherwise, we're going to go back to the main screen and see what else everybody thought of this show. And we're back to the main screen, so we'll see what is happening. Yeah, we're happy with pretty good. A new tag team. Okay, it's a... Well, we've got Rebel Sky in it, so we know it's not going to be that good. We have contracts to renew. Let's do these. I would like to keep him in developmental as a booker. Or whatever he actually is in there. I guess he's going to go down as that. And then we'll do Shane Form because he's only literally just been put on the main card. It'd be a bit silly not to because I wanted to build him around this whole new thing. It doesn't matter because three years is three years, anything can happen. I can still fire most people I want to. That's how easy it will be for the money we actually have. Um, nothing new to really worry about there. Smackdown storylines. This is getting a 77. And I think that most of it is actually the Bailey Nikki storyline doing the work there. The impact made, I'm actually quite impressed with that. The Nia Jax throw uh, there. 61 is improving, I would say. Ain't no diva here. Yeah, Paige and Alexa Bliss are the big players in this one. Uh, yeah, does about right. The women's won 80 for those two. I'm really impressed with that one. And it's mainly, it's, even the tag team match did really well. So. 50 for this is not the strongest tag team match. And a 68 for that, because Ron Carmelo's had to pretty much carry that thanks to an injury that Oscar suffered. Not Oscar's fault. But 
that we couldn't use her for angles. No women on there. Only Rose and Brooke on there. Brooke will get. They're going to start really pushing that team on the pre-show to start with, and see where we end up. On the pre-show, on the card. Well, this isn't the biggest card. The matches are going to be quite long. We've got Bailey and Nikki two out of three falls. Becky and Charlotte in a submission match. Basic match between Ember and Angel. A normal tag team match and a normal singles match. Again, another just thrown together singles match. We have Paige and Alexa in the last woman standing. A normal singles title match and a cage match. Which I believe is everything for this show. All of the people are well booked, I believe. And we'll be back with Shockwave next. Uh, so I think, you know, actually, we said we were going to look at one other thing to see whether we had pushed this woman's popularity. See, so if we look here, she wasn't very popular, only 24, so we've got plenty of work. We've got Mexican women to add to the roster. See, see she was zero in November. Just, okay, we've got two ones. I know it's not much, but we've already pushed her up to three by having a short match on a pre-show. So that's really good to see. So, anyway, so we've got enough of that. And we'll be back for Shockwave. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it all.